Patriot Prime Reviews is a channel for adult collectors and may not be suitable for children under 13 years of age. Viewer discretion is advised. Hey, what's going on guys? Patriot Prime here once again with another video. But before I get started with the subject of this video, I want to give a huge shout out to my sponsor, ToyHacks.com. ToyHacks is a company that provides upgrade decals for modern Transformer figures along with reproduction decals for the vintage ones. While visiting Toy Hacks, make sure and check out the Toy Hacks Armory to see their line of Transformers weaponry in multiple colors and toy stages for awesome display backdrops. Each purchase from Toy Hacks earns you RoboSense that you can use for future purchases. You can check your balance anytime in your cart. Toy Hacks is a company run by collectors for collectors, so make sure and check out ToyHacks.com and tell them Patriot Prime sent you. Now, on to the review. The featured bot in this video is the brand new Transformers War for Cybertron Kingdom Slammer. Now, I found Slammer along with Pipes at my local Walmart yesterday, and it totally took me by surprise because my store hasn't had any new deluxes well, for quite some back. time. And if it wasn't for the box art of these two, I would have totally overlooked them because they were stuffed in way behind the other deluxes on the shelf. It's almost like someone hid them for me. So yeah, I mean, they must have just come out of the box too, the shipping container, because the little plastic tabs are still on there really, really tight. But with this video, we're going to take a look at Slammer first. So taking a quick look at the packaging, we got Transformers, War for Cybertron Kingdom. You got Slammer right there behind the plastic. Some great artwork as usual, Slammer in tank mode and robot mode. Back of the package, we got Slammer with all his components because he is a weaponizer figure, a parts former. Slammer in robot mode, tank mode, and attached to pipes conveniently. And of course, this side of the box is the Kingdom artwork that we're all very familiar with. So now, without further ado, let's get Slammer opened up out of this packaging and check him out. And welcome to Patriot Prime Reviews. <laughs> Now, once you get Slammer all opened up and out of the packaging, you'll see he does come with a sheet of instructions that, as usual, is very well illustrated and easy to follow. He also comes with a trading card. And here we are, the last figure's final wave of Kingdom, and I still get the Ark. I mean, come on! Let's open this up. What we got here? The Ark through the Dead Universe. I've got a few of these. I don't care about the Ark. You also get a barrel, which we'll go ahead and plug into his fist right there. And then you get this tread section. And where this is supposed to go is on the back of Slammer here to cover up all of that gappage that he has. So you'll see two ports right there that match up with the pegs on the tread section. Go ahead, push that in, and there we go. Slammer. In robot mode, Slammer looks fantastic. Hasbro did a really good job giving Slammer a robot mode considering the G1 toy was a tank that transformed into a tower. So I really dig the looks of this. He's big, he's beefy, very imposing looking. I mean, this is the Autobot you want watching your back when you're taking on the Decepticons. Really like the color scheme too with the off gray, the black, and the white. It really works. Sculpted details are off the chain with this guy. He looks so good. Moving in on the head sculpt here. Really like that. Nice blocky G1 look. He's got blue visor, silver mouth plate. Of course, the rest is all white. Lots of details here on the chest. You got the red Autobot insignia dead center. Moving on down, still great details, molded details, sculpted details all around. They did such a good job with this guy. And check this out. He even has mini guns on his feet. You don't see that often. And overall, the figure cleans up really, really good. You're going to have some 
gaps right there due to transformation and the backpack here covers up that big gap I showed earlier. Other than that, the robot mode is just spectacular. I love it. Articulation, the head's on a ball joint, can look up, it can look down slightly, do a complete 360. The arms can go out, they can go in, they can do a complete 360 as well. Of course, this is a modulator, <laughs> you know what to expect with these. There is a bicep rotation, there is a bicep bend, no wrist swivel whatsoever. And I do want to note that he does have fists. I remember in some of the promotional art, I couldn't tell if he had hands or not. He does. I just wish they were painted different so they stood out a little bit more. I mean, give them some black paint to, you know, pop out. But I am happy that he does have fists. There is waist rotation. The legs can go forward. They can go back, though they are going to hit that back piece. But we're going to fix that here in a moment. Legs can go out. They can go in. There is a knee bend and a thigh rotation and a rotation there at the ankle and ankle tilt forgetting what things are called so yeah i love this robot mode now he is very well armed he's got tow guns he's got a cannon on this arm on the right arm you can also take the treads right here on the back and these will pop right off now, i like how they can just pop off of this backpack section so you can leave that on so you don't have that gap. And then you're gonna take this little part off right here. Now, take your two tread sections and they're gonna to pin together right here on the end. They kind of slide in. And you're gonna take this piece right here, attach that so you've got this weapon that you can put on his wrist like so, which I think gives him a battering ram. It reminds me of the battering ram that RoboCop 2 used. Of course, other reviewers have said this is like a chainsaw, but you know, it's your figure. Use your imagination to make it whatever you want. So there you go, guys. There you have Slammer in robot mode. Now let's get him transformed into tank mode. Now, to get Slammer transformed into tank mode, all we need to do is take him apart. Let's go ahead and remove the battering ram, the barrel, pop the forearms off, pop the shoulders off, go ahead and pop the legs off. And right here, let's see, on the back, we need this section off. Now what you're gonna do is take the torso section turn the head around, and then just collapse it down like so. And that's pretty much all we're going to do with this right now. Now we're going to take the tank treads, pop this section off, pop these off, and then we're going to find the back section here, and we're going to reattach the treads. And they go on, I always get confused with this. Let's see, this way here. So you want to make sure you got this little slot right there on the tread. So make sure it lines up with this part right there. Pop that in. And pop that in. So you've got this piece. And you can go ahead and put that back on. And there you go. Now we're going to take the legs, fold the thighs into the leg, and then open the feet up all the way. Just like that. So those are the sides of the tank. Now we're gonna take the shoulder sections and there's little pegs, let me find them, right here where the black lines are. Go ahead and peg these together like so. So you've got that going on. Now, let's see, what do I need next? Take your tank treads and you're gonna plug the treads in right there on the back of Slammer. Actually where they were plugged in before, but now the treads are gonna go there. Now take this section here and you're gonna peg them in with the static pegs. See these pegs over here are gonna move. You wanna use the static pegs and make sure these circles are facing out. And put that back on. Now flip these pegs up. So you've got that going on. Take the 
legs right here and that peg right there is going to go into that hole so just line that up make sure this lines up like so so this section goes around that shoulder piece move those pegs down if you have to so there's one and let's get the other attached there we go i do like how that works how those form around the back of the tank so now you're going to take the arms or the forearms put these together and you're going to put these well one more one thing first move these sections down like so and you're going to plug those in to these pegs right here make sure you have the right sides facing the right direction now in the instructions it tells you to build the turret section first but it's a real pain to get these uh, legs on around the turret if you already have it installed so go ahead this way i like to do it so now you have the turret installed now you're going to take this little piece here put it on the front of the turret which kind of holds those together and now you're going to take the tank barrel plug that into the front of the turret and now you got the waist section here spin this around so this little section here is facing forward and just fold that up into the body of the tank make sure everything is pegged in correctly you're going to bring the turret down slightly and of course you're going to reattach this that is a major complaint i have with this figure right here well not a major complaint it's more of an annoyance but there we have slammer we get that all the way up in there in tank mode now I really like Slammer's tank mode. It's big and beefy, just like robot mode. And the details are outstanding, especially here for the treads with the wheels and the treads themselves. I mean, look at that. That looks awesome. The sculpted detail on this figure is just amazing. I hate the little red numbers right there. Hopefully Toy Hacks will come up with something or I'll just slap an Autobot logo over that and fix it. Now, he does have wheels, which is another big surprise. You got two wheels here in the front and one big wheel right there. And my floor here, whatever you want to call it, is a little rough. So, yes, I can roll him along. He just doesn't slide. So, that's awesome. The turret does not rotate, but it can lift up and down slightly. Like I said, it's on those two ports. So, there really is no rotation except ever so slightly and unfortunately if you do that too much it's going to pop apart and this section right here that's way too loose a little floor polish and that'll fix that right up so no biggie another complaint i do have and this is a real annoyance considering this is slammer and he's supposed to be a tank is blast effects don't fit in the barrel they just they don't fit in there right i mean all the kingdom figures we've had blast effects work perfect but not for slammer here and i have tried multiple effects they just they fall out so i really wish that was a little thicker right there so you can get the blast effect in but it is what it is i'm mainly going to have my slammer in robot mode so all in all i think this guy looks great and he's a perfect homage to the original generation one slammer now quick note my slammer here has been enhanced thanks to Toy Hex decals that vastly improves this figure. And this was one of the very first Toy Hex decal sets that I bought back in 2012. And those decals are still looking great and are really sticking to the figure. So if you've ever worried about the lasting or how long Toy Hex decals last, there you go, 2012. And there you have War for Cybertron Kingdom Slammer in tank mode. Now, another mode that Slammer has that was shown off is he does have a tower mode, just like the original Generation 1 figure. Just to show you, the original Slammer, you took the turret off, flipped this section up, stuck that on Metroplex, and you had a tower. So, this Slammer has that ability as well. You're going to take the turret off. Underneath here, you're going to flip this section out and up just like so so you've got 
this going on. Let me zoom out for you. So once we're here, you're going to fold one of those down, take the antenna, or excuse me, the turret, pop that off that little section right there, attach it like so. So now you have an antenna. I still don't have that far enough back, but you see what I'm going with right here. And then you're going to take this little piece, plug it right in the bottom, and there you have Kingdom Slammer's Tower Mode. Now, unfortunately, I don't have the space to transform my Generations Metroplex into City Mode, so we'll try my best to show off how Slammer works with him. Okay, so I wanted to show you where Slammer in Tower Mode goes on Metroplex here, but unfortunately, I cannot. As you can see, my Metroplex has been enhanced thanks to Toy Hacks decals. Now, there is a 5mm port right there that that decal is covering up. So what you would do is take the bottom of Slammer and plug it right in right there. And that's where he would attach in tower mode in Metroplex's city mode. So since mine's toy hacks, I just have to pop off that little piece. And the only thing I can really do is just stand it up. So... It is what it is. I mean, I'm not going to tear off my Toy Hex decals, and I don't really display my Metroplex in city mode anyway, but there you go. So that's where it will go if you decide to use yours in tower mode. Another cool feature that Slammer has is the fact that he's a modulator figure, so he can break apart to give other Transformer figures extra weaponry. So I've got Pipes right here, who's featured on the back of Slammer's box, and we're going to give him a full loadout. So before any of you decide to hit me in the comments with, hey, you've got pipes transformed wrong. Well, there's a reason, and I'm going to show that off here in a moment. So first things first, we've got the battering ram. That's already transformed, so we'll attach that to pipes forearm right there. Then we've got slammer's forearm sections, and these become boots. So we'll go ahead and Peg these in to the bottom of Pipe's feet. The white really goes well together. So now we've got this section, which was the backpack that the treads attached to. Take that, and you're going to add the tank barrel, which will give Pipe's another wrist-mounted weapon. So we've got that going on. Lastly, we have the legs and the torso and this waist piece. And what we're going to do with this is take the torso section and flip this section all the way around. This peg right here actually tabs right below Slammer's face. So you want to bring this out to where that peg is sticking straight out like so. Now we're going to take the waist piece and peg that into the top. Take the thigh sections and point them out straight. Then you're going to take Slammer's legs and little holes right there, match those up to the pegs on the thigh sections. So now we have a Rocket Pod backpack. And this is why I transformed pipes this way. So the back is flat facing straight up so I can attach the Rocket Pod a little better. So there we go. He is a little back heavy now. So let me get him propped up and zoom out for you a little bit. Okay, so he is really top heavy and does not want to stand, but there's you an idea of how to use Slammer as weapon accessories. And of course, pipes can take his pipes, his blasters rather, put those in hand. And then we've got this section right here. And let's see, where can this go? Here we go. This is, isn't in the instructions, but that's the fun part about these figures is you can kind of do whatever you want. You can attach those here on the ends like so. And now you've got one hell of a rocket pod backpack. So yeah, that is pretty cool. I mean, Pipes is ready for battle as long as he doesn't have to stand up to do it. Oh, I'll be damned. I thought he was going to fall. <laughs>
And now for some quick size comparisons, here is Transformers War for Cybertron Kingdom Slammer with Generation 1 Optimus Prime, Generation 1 Slammer, Thrilling 30 Scamper, and Siege 6-Gun. Transformers War for Cybertron Kingdom Slammer is a figure that has been well worth the wait. We have been wanting a Slammer ever since Titan's Metroplex hit the shelves, and it is so nice to finally get one. And I have to say, Hasbro did a great job with this figure. I love the robot mode. I love the tank mode. The weapon mode for the other figures looks great. And the tower mode is a nice throwback to Generation 1. My only complaint with this figure is the fact that blast effects do not fit. I mean, come on, man. Of all figures that blast effects should fit, it's Slammer. But still, an outstanding figure, and I couldn't be happier. So there you go, guys. Transformers War for Cybertron Kingdom Slammer. So, does a Transformers War for Cybertron Kingdom Slammer belong in your collection? Absolutely. I love this figure. In my opinion, this is one of the best modulator figures that we've got in the entire War for Cybertron line. He's got a great robot mode, great vehicle mode. I love the weaponry that he can give other figures. And it's just really cool to finally get a transformable slammer. I mean, I don't think we've had a slammer figure since G1. And I just, I love this guy. He is so cool. The only complaints I had with him was the turret tends to fall off in tank mode, but that's nothing a little pledge won't fix. And the fact he can't hold blast effects. But those are just minor nitpicks for a otherwise fantastic figure. So if you see a slammer, don't hesitate, pick him up. You are not going to be disappointed. Now guys, if you enjoyed the video, don't forget to like, don't forget to subscribe, and don't forget to click that bell icon to get notified when I upload new reviews. Also, if you're in any position to help out the channel, I do offer channel memberships here on YouTube, and I want to give a huge shout out to all my current channel members because it's your support that helps keep this channel growing. Once again, guys, this is Patriot Prime, signing out. Hooah!